Okay, here is an interesting question. You are given these uh, functions of n. One of them is a constant. The other is square root of n. The third one is n power 1. The fourth one is log n base 2. The fifth one is 100 by n. If you think of them, each of them are functions of n, right? Of course, this is a constant. Here, f of n equals to 10, right? Here, this is a constant, right? Now, the question here is, order them by asymptotic complexity, right? An increasing order of asymptotic complexity. Some things we already know here. For example, we already know that n grows faster than square root n. We already know that. We already know that n grows faster than asymptotically, right? In a, in a, in a bigger type of sense, right? n grows faster than square root n because square root n is nothing but n power half. Right. And we also saw this in the order of in the order of functions. Right. We already saw this in order of functions. Right. Similarly, we know that log n. Right. Look at this. So this is taken care of. This is taken care of. Then we have log n. Right. So this is constant. This is basically constant. And this is also a function of n. Now, the question here is between these two, how do you order? So one thing that we already know is this. Right. 10 is a constant. We know this order. Right. So we know we know that log n grows slower than square root n, which grows slower than n. And of course, constant doesn't grow as n changes. As n changes, constant stays the constant. Right. Now, the big question here is what about 100 by n? What happens to this? Because we don't know where to place 100 by n here. Right. But if you think intuitively, of course, I'll also show you mathematically. But if you think intuitively, right, as n increases, okay. I'll just use this upper arrow mark to indicate that as n increases, what happens to 10? Remember, 10 is a constant. 10 stays the same, right? 10 stays the same. Nothing changes. Whether your n is 100 or 1000 or anything, if f of n equals to 10, as n increases, 10 stays the constant, stays the same. But as n increases, what happens to 100 by n? What happens to 100 by n? What happens to this? This is an interesting question. Right. As n increases, because 100 by n will start reducing. Look at it this way. Right. What is by 100? What is 100 by 10? 100 by 10 is 10. What is 100 by 100? Here your n equals to 10. Here your n is equal to 10. Your, here your n equals to 100. This is 1. Now 100 by 1000. Right. As n increases, what's happening to 100 by n? This becomes 0.1. So as n increases, 100 by n is reducing, which means, which means your constant, which doesn't grow at all, is going to go faster than 100 by n. If you think intuitively, if you think intuitively, of course, I'll also prove this mathematically to you, right? So th actually, this is the correct order. This is the, this is how you need to order these functions of n in asymptotic complexity, right? So 100 by n grows slower than a constant which grows slower than log n because it doesn't grow at all, which grows slower than square root n, which grows slower than n. So in this functions, the tricky part is 100 and 100, sorry, 10 and 100 by n. These two order, finding the order between these two is the tricky part. Everything else is straightforward from order of functions, right? So I'll also prove to you in a slightly different way. Okay, let's take 100 by n, right, and 10. I'll prove that 100 by n is big O of 10. Right. So if you, if you think of this as f of g, sorry, or as f of n, sorry, if you think of this as f of n, if you think of this as f of n, okay, and if you think of 10 as g of n, to prove this, what do I need to do? To prove this, I need to prove that some constant into 10 is greater than or equal to 100 by n for all n greater than or equal to n0. And there exists some constant c and n0 which satisfy this. Right? By definition, I'm just using the definition. I'm just using the definition of big O. Right? If this is my f of n and this is my, if my g of n is 10. Okay? If c into g of n is greater than or equal to f of n for all n greater than or equal to n0. And there should exist some constant c and n0 which satisfy this. Now, let's say c equals to 1. Okay? Let's just assume. So I'm just going to take, this should exist some C, not all C, right? Some C because this is big O. So if I take C equals to 1, 
right? And now let's look at n, right? If I make n0 equals to 10, what happens now? If I make my n0 equals to 10, what happens now? 10 is greater than equal to 100 by n for all n greater than equal to 10. Let. Is this statement correct? Think about it, right? If n equals to 10, LHS is 10, RHS is 10. If n equals to 100, your LHS is 10, which is greater than RHS equals to 1. Which means there exists these constants C and N0 where this is satisfied. Which means 100 by N is bigger of 10. Which means, look at this, which means 100 by N is going to grow slower. Right? Going to go slower or, or at the same rate as a constant. Which means when you start ordering them, you can order them this way. Very simple right very very simple idea right of course you can also prove you can also prove that 100 by n is is smaller of 10 also you can also prove this okay i just proved this but you can also prove this not not very difficult by just using the formula of smaller right by just using the formula of smaller you can also prove this so very simple straightforward problem the only tricky or the confusing part for many people would be comparing 10 with 100 by n.